it's our first visit with Ron Paul of 2013. Uh, he is now the former congressman. The first time I uh, interviewed him, he was running for Congress again, I guess back in 95, 96. Uh, and he'd been in Congress once before as a libertarian. And of course, went back as a Republican. And he has been our greatest defender of liberty, worldwide loved and admired. He's got big announcements coming up soon. I've heard the rumors, and I'll see if he'll give us any hint. Uh, but uh, he joins us, obviously, to talk about the fiscal cliff that he said we've already gone over a long time ago. What's happening with that? Uh, the Sandy Hook shooting, uh, the announcements of the NSA openly spying on us. It's like everything Ron Paul talked about 15 years ago and got called a conspiracy theorist is now just out in the open. And former congressman and really omnibudsman of liberty worldwide, uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. Good. Good to be with you. Did you have a good uh, Christmas? Yep. Very good. Family got here. We had a lot of fun and didn't solve any world problems. I wish I need to learn how to unplug as well. Uh, wow, you know, you heard what I threw out there, sir. Where would you like to start first? Well, the things that I've talked about is mostly, well, the general, uh, you know, deterioration of our individual freedoms and our liberties and our markets. But uh, I think the, the big thing as I uh, wound down my career dealt with, uh, you know, financial and the economy. And uh, I think... Most major parties and most members of Congress are in total denial as to what the real problem is because they think it's just a budget. You know, well, if we uh, change this number, raise taxes, cut spending, or, you know, pretend to cut spending, we solve the problem. And I think it's much bigger than that. I think, first off, the country is bankrupt. We're insolvent. We can't pay the bills, and they won't admit it. I mean, we have these uh, obligations of 200 and uh, $20 trillion of national debt of $16 trillion is where the biggest foreign debtor nation ever. And that, that is ignored. And they, they talk about, uh, you know, uh, what they're going to do with tinkering with the tax code. And, uh, and they talk about cuts, which aren't cuts. They're, it's just all deceit and trying to uh, fool the people into believing that they can tinker with a budget. But I think the problem is, is government is too big. They don't follow the Constitution. They don't know what the rule of government ought to be in a free society. And they don't admit we're bankrupt. And oftentimes I've used this uh, saying that, uh, are we going to go over the, over the cliff? Well, in many ways, we're over the cliff in that we're not going to retrace ourselves. If you're over a cliff, you just don't have a chance to climb back up. And we really don't. We're not going to have enough people in Congress in the next uh, go around, or do we have them now? We have better people now, and we're going to have some people speaking for us. But we, we can't go back and all of a sudden balance our budget, uh, remove the regulations, and protect our liberties. All we have to do is listen to our president, what his plans are. But the Republicans aren't, you know, doing a whole lot more because we have, we're doing, we're facing a situation where it took a hundred years for our governments and our schools to indoctrinate our people to accepting the idea that the role of government ought to be to take care of us and provide perfect safety and make sure nobody falls through, uh, you know, the, the net and and take take care of people and the whole world. And uh, I think we have to address the subject, what should the role of government be? The founders made an attempt at it. They wrote a constitution. We don't obey it. And to me, if we would accept the notion that the role of government is to protect our freedoms, provide some national defense for us, provide a sound uh, currency, and protect our liberties, uh, there, there would be no warfare state and there would be no welfare state. And uh, nobody wants to address that. You know, in all this talk... Neither, neither Republicans or Democrats would even suggest about cutting the militarism. The only talk was, should we increase the military expenditures by 18% or 20 The people who wanted 18% were, were castigated for slashing national defense and said they were, uh, you know, unpatriotic. So that is where the mess is. I see the mess that we're in, a problem of education, a consequence of 100 years of control of uh, many generations sure. indoctrinating them into bad economic policy and bad foreign policy. Congressman, you've talked about globalism, the Bilderberg Group, uh, people like that, but it's now in the Financial Times of London. It's in hundreds of papers that we can probably pull some up and put them on screen where they announce global government by the six mega banks. And I listened to Bloomberg Financial on XM 
And they brag that they've conquered Europe with debt. They've shined the Europeans onto derivatives. They've got them dependent on socialism. But most of the debt is actually the central bank's debt that are really private. And now I see them wrecking us, Congressman, on purpose to make us debt slaves while also making us dependent. I mean, surely they know the facts. Even the Congressional Budget Office, as you know, three or four years ago said we were bankrupt. Uh, all these other government economists have admitted this. So y y you're not just somebody who studied economics. You're also a medical doctor. It's kind of like a patient that's got cancer all over their body. This is already a done deal. So uh, what's your take on my statement that we've been maneuvered into rack and ruin by loan sharks. I mean, I think it's important to not just say they're a bunch of buffoons in D.C. Uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and others, uh, in my research, are just mafia organizations that want us as basically debt slaves on a sharecropping plantation. I think it's partially true, but it's also involved uh, indoctrination through through education. It's just not 10 or 15 people who get together and all of a sudden they can change people's minds. People endorse Keynesianism. They endorse the Federal Reserve. They endorse us being the policemen of the world and we should have these wars in the Middle East. So they have been indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are a few who are going to benefit. But, you know, I, I don't, I can't look, read into their minds. I don't know. They, they sit back and say, you know what, we're going to bankrupt the country and cause this chaos. I think they try to get away with manipulating and maneuvering and benefiting themselves both with power and money and philosophically it doesn't doesn't work out so they have to react so they take advantage of it it's sort of like uh, taking advantage don't let a major crisis uh, go to waste I mean they create the problems they think they're going to get away with it and then when the crisis hits they make use of it and they say well we have well we have to do they're motivated by money and power and they have to kind of control sure the sure I'm talking I don't about think they're smart enough to on a daily basis say well we're going to do a and B is going to be resolved. I think there are mostly unintended consequences that occur, and they uh, and they react. I'd like to get people to react differently. I agree with you that at the mid level and even the upper levels, obviously, it's just a corrupt system people have been born into now. But I'm talking about the 112 point plan that got leaked out of the World Bank when Joseph Stiglitz resigned, the uh, Nobel Prize winner in economics. In 2002, it talked about how they manipulated third world countries into bankruptcy to take control, and it discussed doing it to the West. So uh, at Bilderberg, uh, from our sources, but also at Davos, they, uh, I've got Herman Von Rupi, head of the EU, saying we're going to use the financial crisis to bring in the new world order. Well... And that, that may be, and I don't know every individual who makes these plans, but I do know that I meet a lot of people who believe, I mean, you take a guy like Bernanke, I think Bernanke actually believes that junk. You know, I think he really believes that he's been sent here by the creator to make sure we never have a Great Depression before because they didn't print the money fast enough. I don't think he, he sits and says, and, and goes much further than this because he has invested a lifetime into proving this ideology. I think he's wrong. He's determined to prove he's right. So he's, he creates trillions sure, and trillions sure. of dollars. And then these people that you're talking about, they know what's going on, and they line up, and they get involved, and they, they learn how to manipulate the system for political reasons. So we, we know that uh, There's different our, president factions. Has, our president has an agenda, and, and it's very, very clear. So he, he works his agenda with the system that exists. I agree with you. There's different factions who only care about themselves, and together the, the perfect storm. But you're saying he thinks he's right, you think you're right, sir. Uh, you know, I watched a speech that's in our film Matrix of Evil you gave in 2003 at McKinney Ruffs right outside Austin, uh, here in South Austin, and you laid out everything that was going to happen. How they'd use the drones here, how they'd have the NSA spy on us, how they would use the Patriot Act on the citizens, how, how when they collapse things, they would use that to take full control, how the derivatives bubble would work. I mean, it's like you're a prophet, but you're not. You were in there in the committees. You've studied history. You know what was going to happen. You said the stimulus wouldn't work. You said all these things wouldn't work. You said that the, the, the Republicans would vote to raise taxes. One dollar of cuts for every 41 in spending increases. 77% of Americans with tax increases on payroll. I mean, it, it's like the lying and... What's happened is we've been eased into this tyranny, and so now you're here saying, well, we'll see who's going to be proven right. You've been proven right, Congressman. Toot your own horn. Yeah. Well, 
uh, I will keep tooting my horn about what I, I, I believe in, because I think there are those who do exactly what you're talking about. I remember very clearly uh, George Bush Sr., you know, when the WTO came in, and you say that now so much of these uh, plans are out in the open, and I think George Bush put them out in the open when he said, uh, I saw a major ad, I think it was in the New York Times or something, that uh, we put on the third leg of the New World Order. Before that, you couldn't say New World Order out loud. I mean, or you were a complete idiot or, or a nut job. But he put it out, and he says, we have it. Now we have the WTO, uh, we, we have the IMF, and we have the World Bank. And I think, yes, but they have a philosophic belief that world government is good. And uh, some of them believe it because they think world government, just like world communism, is, is good. And, and some people who join communism, they were sincere. They thought it was good. But others are driven by power. Uh, they're driven by wealth and control, and, and they're, uh, they're psychopathic, and they want to use force against people. So I think they feed on each other is what I think happens. But I think if you get – but all governments reflect popular opinion – and no, no, I agree with you. I've heard you say over and over again, this is happening because we become lazy, decadent slobs. I work some days 18 hours a day, but I'll be honest, compared to my dad or somebody like his dad who grew up on farms, they enjoy working. They can fix anything. They, uh, my, I mean, my dad, I call him at three in the morning and he'll come help me. And I worry because, I, I mean, I'm a shadow of my dad. He's a shadow of his dad. I'm not teaching my kids to work that hard like I, I i mean i i think we really are degenerating and i'm not i'm not romanticizing old timers i just know that people used to be closer to the ground more street smart and harder working more independent and not as decadent and there is a feedback loop of decadence now that's almost impossible to escape well i i know exactly what you're talking about I would agree with you to a great deal but I also look for the positive things, because if I look at the young people that come out for my rallies, I see young people who are very dedicated, they're very principled, they're idealistic, and they're not decadent when it comes to computers and the Internet. They're pretty darn smart. And I don't know the technology, but I know how valuable it is, and I'm able Absolutely. to use it and get other people to help me. So in that sense, I become the optimist because... Boy, Technology so far in most of all of history has always been used to enhance the power of the state and to kill people, you know. Yes, but sir. This is one time, if we're smart enough, that we ought to be able to use this technology and spread information. I mean, you do it all the time. You, you know about the technology. We're spreading this message. So I, I get to be optimistic that all we have to do is continue this. And that is why in my farewell speech, the most dangerous a trend that we have to stop is the threat to our civil liberties, our ability to resist. You know, what is the, what are these people, uh, how, how many people are going to be arrested, you know, and put in secret prisons, and, and how often are, are we going to be able to maintain our First Amendment rights and our Second Amendment rights? That is the protection of civil liberties that's most important, but the best way to do is awaken a generation, and we have the tool, and it's the Internet, and we have a very responsive uh, young group and they what happens to the establishment is they beat this out of us they, they do it with every generation to make you feel like you're a bad guy because you think freedom is good now our job and we have these tools is to make sure that this whole new generation knows that freedom their instincts are right we're all natural believers in liberty we're all libertarian in the sense that we want to be left alone but it's beaten out of us by our system the movies the schools the government all of these things so I, I see a tremendous opportunity, and uh, I hope I'm not uh, totally deceiving myself, but I'll keep working with the assumption that we can change people's minds. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and to be clear, uh, I, I was speaking in generalities like you did in your powerful farewell uh, address from Congress that's gone so viral out there, thank God, thanks to DrudgeReport.com and other big sites that posted it, millions and millions of views just on the Internet alone that obviously there are the liberty-loving people who are a growing minority, but it, it, it's, it's pretty much the wheat from the chaff. People are either getting totally mind-blown and accepting any level of corruption, or they're getting more and more active. And we have to take heart, as you've said, 5% started and won the Revolutionary War. Well, we're trying to win an info war. 
We've got yeah. more like 25, 30% now that are awake. All we've got to do is wake up others, and then we're going to take the country back. And so there's a race by the authoritarians to take over, but that there's good factions, right. and people need to know that. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And the thing that's on our side is not only has our message grown in popularity and we've been able to spread it, but the opportunity is the absolute failure of their system. Communism, you don't hear people come out and say, well, you know, I'm a communist. I think the communism is going to take over the world. But communism failed. It fell apart. The Soviet system doesn't exist. But Keynesianism, the planned economy, welfareism, inflationism, it's failing. It's failed and over and over again, and they keep saying capitalism has failed. No. Well, that's in a big challenge. We have to make sure that we don't get blamed. It isn't capitalism that failed. They haven't ever really even tried total free markets, and that's what we should force on them. I agree with you. Moving quickly, there are other points. Campaignforliberty.org. Uh, I've been told, uh, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there from different folks, you've got three big things that are going to be announced soon. A, can you give us any sneak peek? And B, uh, when will this announcement come, uh, Ron Paul? Well, there are a lot, of, a lot of things I've been talking about and uh, planning for. They're not quite ready. But there's there's a possibility I'll be able to do some type of programming, uh, you know, on the internet, uh, not on regular TV. Uh, and if if that works out, you know, I think we can get a, a big audience for what we're doing. I'm going to be very interested in promoting homeschooling because I talk about education all the time, and I think the public school system is failing. And uh, you know, it isn't the rich people that are taking their kids. Uh, uh, you know, doing the homeschooling, but I think average people and even poor people can salvage their children from the system by uh, by homeschooling. And I'm also going to be uh, touring the colleges. Uh, uh, soon I uh, will be starting that, uh, uh, so uh, I'll continue to do that. So I, I have a lot of things that uh, I can do, but they're not all, all firm yet. That's right, but uh, I mean, I heard about a Ron Paul theatrical release, Ron Paul TV, and uh, something else I heard is being planned. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, well, I want to make sure, you know, uh, little birds tell me this and that, but you know, I keep my ear to the ground. All, all I know is very exciting. And, and I'm not taking this moment to bash Glenn Beck. I've tried to be nice to him, but he says he's now the leader of the libertarian movement. Yes, I saw that. I'll have to check him out. I wonder what he believes in. <laughs> yeah, because he told me that your supporters four years ago were going to blow us up with bombs and that we did Oklahoma City. And then he keeps you know, saying that we shouldn't get in the government's face. I mean, my only deal with Glenn Beck is he says I'm dangerous and basically shouldn't be on the air. Uh, Piers Morgan basically says that as well. And then now he tells me that he's my leader. Uh, and then he's now going to become Ron Paul and Alex Jones, I guess, mixed. Do you have any comments on that? Not too much, because I don't know exactly what he's talking about. All I can do is speak for myself on what I believe in and what I'm trying to do. And I've been pretty much up front on, you know, what the principles are and in which direction we should go and effort. I, uh, I think I do one thing differently than others. And that is I try to stick to, you know, ideas rather than personalities. And, of course, we've already mentioned the president and I mentioned George Bush. But over the years, I basically don't attack the individuals. I don't generally attack Bernanke. Sure, but you did call him a demagogue when he said that your supporters wanted to blow up buildings. Yeah, that's for sure. But, so, but generally speaking, I don't, I don't do the personality thing. That is, doesn't mean that... Uh, matter of fact, if you do the personality thing, you get a lot more attention, but I don't want it to distract. If, if people want, if they'll try to entice me to say, what should we do with um, Bernanke? How should we punish him? No, no, remember, sir. Remember sure. what our governor said that we should do with him. I, I might agree with it. I might even say things along that way, but mo most of the time I'll go and say, it's the system. It's the system of the Federal Reserve. No, no, no. I agree. I agree. I agree. And that is what I want to concentrate some people will concentrate on different things. They'll have different tactics and different viewpoints, and I think I think that's fine. No, no, listen, I think Glenn Beck does a lot of great work and has gotten better and better. He is just systematically, I don't infight. You, you'll never hear my show talking about other people that are in the liberty movement. He he, he just routinely says, I'm, he said I made up the 1.6 billion bullets, even though that's AP Reuters, direct federal purchases. You know, I'm making up the police state. I'm making up NSA spying. Uh, your supporters want to blow buildings up. I mean, he he, he, uh, he is trying to gatekeep, and I'm just warning you 
that uh, that unless you join with Sauron, Dr. Paul, he's going to he's going to stab you in the back. And I'm only saying that like kind of like a chart when you're coming into a bay in a boat. I'm just marking the chart, Dr. Paul. But you're a smart guy. You know that uh, we've only got about six, seven minutes left in closing. Sandy Hook and now the Feinstein bill and others to make us physically turn them in, not just go back and re-register with the ATF at their pleasure. Uh, now they want to just open where they decide law-abiding citizens turning their guns in. What is your take on that, and are you concerned about uh, a purge or persecution of gun owners? Well, I'm concerned about their inconsistency. Uh, they want to get rid of the guns because somebody used a gun and did some violence. But we all know that more people are getting killed with hammers and fists and, and knives. Uh, so they're not very they're, they're not very consistent. They see an opportunity. They they uh, they want to get rid of the guns. Some people believe they're dangerous and want to get rid of them, and other people want to get rid of them because they know that guns can resist a government tyranny. And some people uh, like the idea that uh, governments become tyrants and they should run things as long as the government kills children. It's okay. So they want to protect that. You know, all that scandal. And outcry, which uh, much of it was justified seeing kids getting killed, it's a horror. But at the same time, how about those people who are saying, okay, this is an excuse to take away the rights of people who use guns to defend their family. How many of them are shouting and screaming about the children that our drones are killing on a daily 